Hello Grade 12s. Today we'll be joining Tato as he discusses the results of his calculations using income and expenditure with his lecturer. To make it easier to understand, they also take a look at how the calculations of the finance of the craft store business have been represented. Sanwan and Ma. Hey, Tato, come on in. How's your case study going? Oh, I am having so much fun. Huh. I've collected data on how many items Mada Mini makes and her sales. I've used this information to calculate her income and her expenditure. The first table records the cost of each item and the quantity of each item Madi made in the course of last week. Then I added these costs together to get the value of Madi's total variable expenditure for the week. Next, I added in her fixed expenditure, which includes her rental and transport costs. I got a total of 1,625 rand and 13 cents. Um, ah, in my next table, I recorded the income Madi collects every week. The first column shows her selling price, and the second column the number of things sold. I calculated the total income for each item and added them together to get the total amount of variable income. I then added in the 20 rand that Mr. Banga pays Madi for his share of the storeroom rent. The total income Madi brought in last week came up to 1,631 rand. Hmm. These tables make sense. And the calculations are all correct. Wow. What are your conclusions regarding this data? Well, it is obvious that the difference between expenditure and income is only... 5 rand 87. Now, although Madi is able to cover her expenses, she is making very little money despite all her efforts. That doesn't seem fair, does it? I agree with most of what you are saying, Tato, but your comparison of her weekly income and expenditure doesn't really give an accurate reflection of how well or how badly she's doing. There are terms that I think would help you to understand. When the amount of money a business collects as income is equal to the expenditure the business has, we say the business will break even. When a business's expenditure is greater than its income, then the business is making a loss. And when the income is greater than the expenditure, then the business is making a profit. The goal of any business should be to maximize the profit earned. Your tables provide a good summary of how much Madi spends making beaded items every week and how much money she makes from what she sells during the week. But what the tables don't do, though, is tell us how much money it costs Madi to make the items that she sells every week. So they don't really look to see if Madi is making a profit or a loss. They just reflect the flow of cash through the business. Oh, I get it. Although Madi is covering her expenses from week to week, the only way I'll be able to tell whether she's making a loss or a profit is by calculating the cost of what she's selling. That's right, Tato. Is there anything else you've learned while collecting your data? Yes. I've noticed that the difference between the cost of making the product and the selling price is very small. I'm not certain if Madi has calculated her selling prices very well. Maybe she doesn't realize that she needs to add in part of her fixed expenditure with each sale to cover the regular running costs of her stall and materials. She's only just covering her costs for some items, although there is a larger markup on others. Good point, Tato. The cost price of an item is how much it costs to make it, including all materials used, the time it takes to make it, as well as other expenses like hiring a store. Mm. How would you work out a pricing structure for Madi's products? During my research, I've established that certain businesses calculate the cost price of a particular item. They then increase the selling price by a set percentage. Certain items carry a profit of 200%. While I'm certain Madi won't agree to increasing her prices by 200%, she might agree to, say, 66% on all her items. <laughs> uh, that would certainly increase her profits and make her long working hours worthwhile. I'll do all my calculations in this table. In the second column, I've written down the cost prices. In the next column, I'll add the additional 66% of the cost for each of the items. I'll use my calculator to work out the percentage. 
Ah, let's see. Um, seven rand and 43 cents multiplied by 66% equals four rand and 90 cents. I filled in the markup and added it to the cost price. The total comes to 12 rand and 33. I've rounded this off to the next 50 cents. So the new price for the beaded ribbon is 12 rand 50. I'll repeat the same steps to work out the rest of the prices. Most of the new prices are not that different to the old ones, but at least they've all been increased by the same percentage markup. Even if Mahdi wants to put a bigger markup, that would still be fair because the quality of her items is so good. You're doing good work, Tato. Think though, how are you going to make sure that Mahdi is able to cover a fixed expenditure out of that 66% markup? The first thing I'll do is take the fixed expenditure of 435 Rand and subtract 20 Rand. That's um, the money that she gets from Mr. Banga as rental for his side of the storeroom. This gives me a total fixed expenditure of 415 Rand. This needs to be covered from the sales of the goods. Hmm. I think the best way is to divide the 415 Rand by the number of items Mahdi makes. She makes six items. So 415 divided by six gives us 69 Rand and 17 cents. But how do I find a way to work out how many items Mahdi must sell before her total income exceeds her expenditure? One way of solving that problem is to make up a formula for the income my dear receives from one of her items and find a formula for the expenditure as well. To simplify things, let's choose one item, say, her beaded ribbons. A simple equation relating the income received from selling beaded ribbons and the number of ribbons sold would work. I represents the total income and N represents the number of ribbons. So I, the total income, equals the selling price of one ribbon, 12 rand 50, times N, the number of ribbons sold. Good, you've got the equation for income correct. Now, what about the formula for calculating the expenditure in making the ribbons? For my expenditure formula, N will still represent the number of ribbons, and E will stand for the total expenditure. I'll work out the expenditure formula in the same way as I did for the income formula, E equals the cost of making one ribbon, seven rand and 43 cents, times N, the number of ribbons Mahdi makes. Is the formula for total expenditure complete? No. Remember, I've allocated an equal part of the fixed expenditure to each item. So before Mahdi even makes a ribbon, she has a cost of 69 rand and 17 cents to cover. This value is not going to change and must be added to the total expenditure. This means my final formula for expenditure is E equals 7,43 times N plus 69,17. Whew, excellent work, Tato. There's one more thing I would like you to think about. Could you draw the graphs using these formulae to represent the income and expenditure on one set of axes? That's a great idea. I'm going to start by making a table. In the first column of this table, I'll write down some values for the number of ribbons. I've chosen values from 0 to 20. These are my input values, and I'll plot these on the horizontal axis of the graph. In the next column, I'll record my income values. I'll match each input value with an income value using the income formula. The income values are the output values of the formula. I'll plot these amounts on the vertical axes. What about the expenditure values? I'll fill in the expenditure values in the third column of my table. Here I've used the expenditure formula to match the input values, the number of ribbons, and the total expenditure in rands is the output. I'll match my expenditure values to the vertical axis on the graph. Hmm. Well, it looks like you're all set to draw. You've chosen your axes correctly. Make sure that you choose the best scale. Your graph must be as big as possible on both axes. I've noticed that I need to plot my input values from 0 to 20 and my output values from 0 to 250. 
I'll turn my graph paper so that the longer side is horizontal. On my horizontal axis, one large block will represent two ribbons. And on my vertical axis, one large block will represent 50 rand. That's one solution, though you could have kept your graph paper the usual way. And then chosen each large block on the horizontal axis to represent four beaded ribbons. And each large block on the vertical axis to stand for 25 rand. Both choices of scale will fill most of the graph paper. Now, plot your values. That's the easy part. I've already made a point at zero, zero, because if my D doesn't sell any ribbons, then she doesn't get any money. And if she sells one ribbon, then she gets 12 rand 50. Here's the line for one ribbon on the horizontal axis. All I need to do is find the line for 12 rand 50 on the vertical axis. If one big block represents 50 rand, then one small block must represent 5 rand because there are 10 small blocks in each big block. And so to find 12 rand 50 on the vertical axis, I need to count up 2.5 to here. And now I need to line up my input and output points. The position where my horizontal value is 1 and my vertical value is 12 rand 50 is the one that I want. So. I am going to make a mark on the graph. Ha! Tado, you're doing well. Oh, when you're done marking all the points, for the income actually, draw a straight line joining them, huh? To show a trend. I'm going to have to leave you to get on with your drawing of the expenditure graph all by yourself. It's time for my next class. Oh, I've gotten the hang of making marks and drawing graphs by now. Thank you very much, ma'am. I am going to go home and make a similar graph for all the other items Mardi makes. Mm, good. Oh, please come and see me again when you are done blotting the graphs. <laughs> <laughs> there is so much really important information graphs show us. <gasps> Thank you very much, ma'am. Okay. Bye. Thank you for joining us, Grade 12s. Remember, the task for this section can be found in the Finance of Business Task video. You'll also be able to learn more on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.